Hello everyone and welcome back. It's Davide here and today I'm going to show you how to perform a proper orthogonal decomposition in Modulo. We are at the, the fifth part of this course. We have done the, the fourth part, the review of Modulo. And uh, now we are ready to learn how to perform a POD. So let's start. First of all, let's choose an exporting folder. In this video tutorial, I will perform the POD of the two test cases already shown in the second video of the course. So the case of the 1D pulsating Poisson flow and the case of the time resolved PIV, that is a 2D vector test case. You can download the dataset from the link in the description below. Let's start from the 1D test case. So let's choose an exporting folder, for example, testing modulo on the desktop, and let's add a slash to create another folder. For example, called test pod 1D. Now we can import our dataset. This dataset presents a separated mesh format file. So we have to select the mesh file first and then the snapshots. Well, since this is a 1D test case, we cannot modify delta x, delta y, and the scale. Also, we cannot modify the region of interest along the y direction, but only along the horizontal direction. Let's say that we want to perform the POD of the entire domain, so we can click on done and wait for the construction of D. Now, as usual, I will cut this part of the video. Ok, D is ready, so we are ready to perform the POD, so we select it from the menu process, POD. We are requested to input a sampling frequency, that for this test case is 2. Now we are requested to input a range of modes, R1 is the first and R2 is the last mode that we want to export. As we will see in the next videos, for the DFT and MPOD, we are forced to compute all the modes, even if we want to export only some of them. This occurs because these decompositions require, at the end of the computation, a permutation to sort all the modes in decreasing order of amplitude. This is not the case of the POD, whose modes are sorted by construction and no permutation is needed since the POD is energy-based. Hence, this window appears before computing the modes in order to compute only the ones we are interested in. The rank of the data matrix for this test case is 2, so we are interested only in the first two modes. So let's put here 1 and 2, and go ahead. Only the selected modes uh, will be computed and exported. We have the spatial structures uh, on the left and the temporal structures on the right, in the upper part of the display. In the bottom part of the display, we have their Fourier transforms, so the frequency content of the associated temporal structure. Let's give a look at the results file. As we can see, together with the figures, Excel files are created. For example, the file called mesh contains the computational domain. For a 1D test case, it is organized uh, in only one sheet, where we can find uh, the spatial discretization of the domain. There is also a file containing the sigmas, uh, that is organized in uh, only one sheet for the POD and the MPOD. As we will see in the next video, for the DFT, this is organized in two sheets. These sigmas represent the amplitude of the modes, and they are plotted in the figure called sigmas. The rank of the data matrix for this test case is 2, and in fact we can notice that uh, from the third mode on, the amplitude start being negligible. Also in the Excel, we can notice an important difference between the second value of the sigmas and the third one. It is worth underlining that these sigmas 
are normalized by the square root of ns times nt. This allows to obtain energies that are mesh independent. Let's give a look at the spatial structures. For a 1D test case, they are represented by a column vector, as it is shown also in the unique sheet of the Excel file. It is a velocity profile. The spatial structures that we have exported are the same shown in the presentation in the second video. So this is the spatial structure of the first mode. And then we have also the spatial structure of the second mode. They are the same spatial structures shown in the second video in the presentation given by Miguel. Giving a look at the temporal structures, it is possible to notice that uh, their Excel files are organized into two sheets. The first representing the time domain. So we have the time discretization in the first column and then the temporal structure in the second column. In the second sheet, their Fourier transform, so their frequency content, is shown. The first column contains the frequencies, and then we have uh, psi hat, so the frequency content of the psi, of the temporal structure. They are plotted uh, in two different figures called uh, temporal structure mode 1, time, and temporal structure mode 1, frequency. As already said by Miguel in the second video, through the POD we cannot associate uh, the spatial structure to any of the frequencies involved, and it is confirmed by the frequency content of the temporal structures, in which uh, uh, we don't have a unique dominant frequency. So the interpretation of the temporal structure is not trivial. Now let's do the same for a 2D vector test case, namely the case of the time resolved PAV. If you want to have uh, more information about this test case, you can look up the paper online uh, on archive. Let's choose an exporting folder, so testing modulo, and let's create the folder called test PUD 2D this time. I will go a bit faster while importing the data. So let's choose for a 2D vector test case that presents an embedded mesh format file, data, now let's set the parameters for the plotting. So let's flip the y-axis. Here we can put 2, 2, and uh, 5, okay. Um, let's choose the, the entire domain as region of interest, so we perform the POD of the entire domain, and let's click on done. As usual, I will cut this part of the video. Okay, we are ready to perform the POD, so let's choose it from the menu process. The sampling frequency for this measurement was 2 kHz, so let's put here 2000. And uh, let's take the first 8 modes. Now let's wait for the computation and for the exporting. Okay, modes exported, so let's open the exporting folder and let's give a look at the results. The first difference is that the mesh file 
is organized in two sheets. The first represents the horizontal direction, while the second represents the vertical direction. They are exported as matrices so that you can use them for replotting, uh, for example, in MATLAB. The file containing the sigmas presents the same format um, shown before, one sheet in which the energies are shown. They, as usual, uh, are normalized and are plot in the figures called sigmas. The spatial structures are organized uh, into two sheets. The first represents the horizontal component of the spatial structure, while the second represents the vertical component of the spatial structure in terms of velocity. They also are exported as matrices to represent the local value of the velocity. So for example, this cell here represents the local value of the vertical component of the velocity in the space point uh, x3, y8, because the first row is not considered. The format of the temporal structure is the same shown before. So, in the Excel file, we have two sheets organized uh, in uh, time domain in the first one and frequency content in the second one. If we look at the special structure of the fourth mode, we can notice that uh, it is mostly linked to the wall jet. So we expect from the frequency content uh, of the temporal structure that uh, the dominant frequencies are low. And in fact, we do have uh, dominant frequencies that are uh, near zero, let's say, but something is happening also at uh, higher frequencies. So also in this case, uh, we can confirm that the POD is not able to distinguish the frequency contents. So this was the video about the POD in Modulo. I hope you, you liked it and uh, I hope to see you in the next video in which uh, we will perform the discrete Fourier transform of the same test cases. So we will perform the DFT on the pulsating post-cell flow, that is a 1D test case, and on the time-resolved PAB. So see you in the next video.